Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. With over 200 episodes made, Boston Blackie aired from 1944 to 1950 on NBC Radio. As usual, we remind you to like and follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and keep the golden age of radio alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com to our Patreon page. Give that donate button a click. And now, Boston Blackie. Rinso, R-I-N-S-O, Soapy Rich Rinso presents Boston Blackie, starring Chester Morris. <laughs> what are you reading, Chief, little Abner? No, listen to this, Matthews. Special feature of the great gems exhibit at the famous Godet Jewelers will be the incomparable Star of the Nile Emerald. One of the most precious gems in the world, so precious that George Stevens, vice president of Godet's, is personally bringing the star to Chicago from Chicago to New York. <laughs> I don't get the joke, Chief. <laughs> sure you don't, because you don't know that Boston Blackie's on the same train with George Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> Chief, I don't get it. Well, if I know my Boston Blackie, and to my great sorrow I do, he won't be able to resist a little gadget worth a cool 200 grand. I still don't see what's funny. <laughs> Besides, Blackie hasn't gone after sparklers in a long time. I know that, but I also know one thing that sparkles that's right up Blackie's alley. Yeah, what's that? Dame. Sure, Chief, but the star of the Nile ain't a dame. Yeah, but Helen Crew is. Helen Crew? Yeah. Something's bound to happen on a train when it's carrying those three. George Stevens, Helen Carew, and Boston Black. Well, nobody has to lead Blackie to adventure because somehow adventure always seems to seek him out. In just a moment, we'll hear more about Blackie and the star of the Nile. You know, you can lead a soap to water, but you can't always make it give thick, rich suds. Not if it's hard water, and not if you're using one of those lazy bar or skimpy suds package soaps. No, ma'am, that's when you want Rinso. Soapy Rich Rinso on the job. You see, Rinso bubbles up in a mountains of suds, practically at the touch of water. Suds that go right to town on your clothes. Suds that get out more dirt to give you that Rinso white, Rinso bright wash. And no hard scrubbing or boiling to ruin your wash day disposition. A short soaking in Rinso suds, a few quick finger rubs on extra soiled places, and your clothes are ready to rinse. So, next wash day, whistle up a Rinso wash. A wash that's <whistles> Rinso white and Rinso bright. And now, Chester Morris and the adventures of Boston Blackie. It's obvious that an international bank should be established for reconstruction. At the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference held at Bretton Woods, certain preliminary steps were taken. However, it is only the beginning. Oh, I says When right. you realize that the International Monetary Fund will total around $8,500,000,000. So, but that's only the beginning. Yes, well, a small beginning. You know, I get kind of mixed up when I start counting over 850. <laughs> oh, young man, we'll all have to learn how to count in millions and billions in the post-war world. Well, that's very interesting. Oh, uh, here you are, Stuart. I'd like some dessert. Can you take this seed, miss? Oh, thank you. Never mind the dessert, Stuart. Well, I'm finished. Uh, wouldn't you rather have this chair by the window? Thank you. And uh, good day to you, young man. Thanks for your company. <laughs> well, thanks to you for the tip on the international monetary situation. <laughs> I can't wait to use it. Um, very interesting man. Mm, and very distinguished looking, too. Mm. Who is he? I don't know, but he's awfully good at counting. Is, um, is it all right if we talk? Why not? You see, my mother never told me not to talk to strangers on a train. <laughs> <laughs> I like your mother. Very intelligent woman. <laughs> well, I'm no isolationist. But to make it proper, my name is Helen Carew. Oh, and mine is Boston Blackie. Mm, I've heard that name somewhere. Are you a baseball player? <laughs> no, why? Do you like baseball? No, not particularly. Well, uh, why did you bring up the subject? Oh, just to make conversation. Fine. Uh, let's talk about you. All right, let's. I'm a very pleased young lady on a train between Chicago and New York. Why are you pleased? Because I didn't expect conversation with my dinner. 
Well, do you realize that the International Monetary Fund will total about $8,500,000,000 this year? No. Yes. You see... <laughs> Uh-oh, it's back again. Excuse me, I've lost something. It can't be that $8,500,000,000. No, it was a chamois pouch. I don't see it. Uh, wait. Oh, uh, I'd better get out of the way. It isn't here. Oh, pardon me, sir. What did you lose? This is terrible. Terrible. Waiter. Waiter. Oh, it sounds important. Young man, you have no idea how important. That pouch was worth $200,000. That's a lot of money to be carrying around. It wasn't money. It was an emerald. One of the most valuable gems in the world, the Star of the Nile. What a pretty name. I tell you, Inspector, I've been robbed. It was sometime during the dinner hour. The star of the Nile is missing. Okay, Mr. Stevens, I got that much from the telegram the conductor sent. Now, we'll search every passenger on the train if we have to, so calm down. Now, you say you thought you left it in the diner. Were you alone? No, a young man joined me for dinner, and then later, just before I left, a young lady was seated at our table. Mm -hmm. Friends of yours? Oh, no, just the people one meets on a train. Now, this young man, what was he like? Well, he was a clean-cut-looking chap with dark hair, a good build, nice smile. Mm -hmm. I'm not a bit surprised. And the young lady? Oh, quite attractive. As a matter of fact, the young man seemed rather taken with her. Well, Mr. Stevens, I don't think you have to worry about your star of the Nile. I might even say the situation is well in hand. Matthew should be here any moment now with the man we're looking for. Here he is, Chief. Welcome, Boston Blackie. Welcome home. <laughs> your new home. As a matter of fact, I've prepared a special escort to take you there. Well, now, how thoughtful, Inspector. But uh, <laughs> where's the brass band? All right, come off it, Blackie. Where's the emerald? This is a great shock to me, young man. Well, it's no shock to me, sir. I, I know my Faraday. He never fails. He never fails to be dead wrong. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Blackie. But we, you were in the diner with Mr. Stevens when the emerald disappeared. Mr. Stevens? I didn't even know that was his name. Oh, now, Blackie, as if you didn't know that Mr. Stevens was vice president of Godet's and that he was carrying the Star of the Nile to New York, as if you didn't read the papers. Of course I read the papers, Inspector, but I, I was a little more interested in the fact that we'd just taken Can and Saipan. Okay, okay. Now you can tell me all about that at headquarters. Come on, Blackie. Now, look, Faraday, do you mind if I talk this over with Mr. Stevens? Whatever you have to say, you stay at headquarters. Come on. I'll be in touch with you, Inspector. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Now, about that brass band, Blackie, I'll arrange to have one when we send you up the river. Oh, are you leaving, Mr. Blackie? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, my Uncle Faraday always brings the town car to meet me. Uncle Faraday, my aunt. Well, your Uncle Faraday must have a lot of influence. I wonder when the police are going to let the rest of us off the train. Well, Miss Carew, I'll see if I can use my influence. You see, he happens to be the police. Oh, uh, Uncle, meet Miss Carew. How do you do, Mr. Faraday? Please to meet you. I hope this fellow hasn't taken you in, too. Oh, no, Mr. Faraday. On the contrary, he's been very nice to me. Yeah, yeah, that's Blackie. Well, you might as well know, Miss Carew. He's being charged with the theft of the Star of the Nile. But that's impossible. Impossible? What do you mean, he Miss Carew? Well, I was at the table when Mr. Stevens discovered his loss, and I'm sure that Mr. Blackie had nothing whatever to do with it. You haven't known him as long as I have, Miss Carew. You mean to tell me that Boston Blackie didn't do it? That's exactly what I mean. Well, thanks, Miss Carew, for telling the inspector something that he should have known. He usually goes the long way around. You helped him find the shortcut. <sighs> oh, you haven't gone yet, Inspector. No, I'm afraid we'll have to begin all over again, Mr. Stevens. What do you mean? Well, Miss Carew here has a strong alibi for Blackie, and I'm still looking for a loophole, but... Under the circumstances, I'm afraid I can't hold him. But you're going to do something about it, aren't you, Inspector? Well, after all, you were sure that the emerald must still be on the train. Well, that's right, Mr. Stevens, it is. That's what I tried to tell you before the inspector shut me up. Oh, so you know. Well, come on, Blackie, where is it? I didn't say I knew where. Huh. Uh, Mr. Stevens, you're rather absent-minded, aren't you? Absent-minded? Why, no. Not well, perhaps uh... I'm jumping to conclusions, but, uh, of course, if you remember, you left the diner without paying your bill. I did? Oh, not that I minded buying your dinner, Mr. Stevens, but... It occurred to me that if you were absent-minded enough to forget your dinner check, you, uh, you also might have forgotten something else. How could I forget the Star of the Nile? I put it in my vest pocket just before I went into the diner. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, are you sure you put it in your vest pocket, Mr. Stevens? Yes, yes. Well, then the whole thing's solved. Oh. You know, all during dinner, I was envying you, Mr. Stevens. I really was. You looked so cool and comfortable in that sports jacket you were wearing, and... And you weren't wearing a vest, Mr. Stevens. I wasn't? Well, that's absurd. Now, now wait a minute. Oh, what's going on here? Vests, sports jackets. Come on, Blackie. Don't you remember, Mr. Stevens? Uh, let me think. I, I, I lay down to take a nap just before dinner. Yes. I got up and dressed and... 
By George, you're right. Oh. The emerald must be in the vest that I packed in my suitcase. <laughs> oh, Inspector, I'm terribly sorry to have caused you all this trouble, and you, young man, and uh, young lady. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And good day. <sighs> well, how do you like that? You seem to be disappointed, Inspector. Yeah. You know, if Boston Blackie can sit next to a guy in a train that's got something worth 200 grand and not do something about it, I guess it's time I turned in my bag. <laughs> well, you should have thought of that before, Inspector. Yeah. Just think. By now, you could have had a cottage, a couple of cows, a victory garden, instead of that pet ulcer of yours. Uh, by the way, what do you call it? Boston Blackie. What else? Why, Inspector, how sweet of you. Naming your first one after me. Oh. <laughs> Miss Carew, I, I've been looking for you. Here's a cab coming up now. May I drop you someplace? Oh, thanks. Uh, where to, Miss Carew? Uh, the Middleton, please. Okay, driver, 48th Street off Lexington. <laughs> you don't miss a thing, do you, Mr. Blackie? Well, I, uh, I have a great appreciation for beautiful things. Oh, then you must have seen the Star of the Nile. Star of the Nile? Mm -hmm. I was talking about beautiful things, uh, such as... Well, the dessert I had for dinner last night. Oh. <laughs> I was just marveling at how clever you were, helping Mr. Stevens to find his emerald. Well, it isn't hard to find something that was never lost, Miss Carew. And, uh, incidentally, thanks for putting in a good word for me with the inspector. Oh, don't mention it. By the way, mm -hmm. I'll, uh, I'll bet there's another thing your mother forgot to warn you about. Oh? Accepting dinner invitations from a young man in a taxi cab. <laughs> I told you not to disturb me, Miss Everett. I'm too busy to see... Oh, who are you? Louis. Louis? Yeah. Miller said you wanted to see me. Oh, uh, oh yes, Mr. Louis. Uh, won't you sit down? Now, look, let's get this straight, Mr. Stevens. I don't know you, but Miller said you had a job for a guy with uh, fingers. Well, I wouldn't exactly put it that way, Mr. Louis. And another Louis. thing, Mr. Stevens. This is strictly business. Miller says you want me to open up a safe down at Godet's and lift a hunk of jewelry. Well, now... Uh... And what's more, Mr. Stevens? I know you're vice president of Godet's. That's your business, but it ain't mine. And if you're worrying about what might happen, you're in a swell spot. After all, who'd the judge believe? Me or you? Well, I'm glad we understand each other, Mr. Louis. The emerald has already been deposited in the Godet vault, and since the exhibit will open tomorrow, there's no reason for any further delay. <laughs> Hey, Blackie. Did you hear me calling you? Well, vaguely. To be honest with you, Shorty, I had my mind on somebody else. Well, boss, I just heard something I thought you'd be interested in. Yeah? You know, you were telling me about that emerald mixed up on the train? Yeah. Well, I just got a tip, see? Somebody's going to crack the Godet safe for that emerald. When? Midnight. How straight was this tip, Shorty? A very reliable tip, boss. Uh, a fingers told me. Fingers? Oh, that's too big a job for him. He's only got ten. Well, that's what the man said. He said that. That small time safe cracker. I guess I'd better go down and help him out. But uh, before business, pleasure. Well, for once, Miss Carew, I can't blame Faraday. After all, he, he brought us together. Brought us together? Yes. What do you mean? Well, if he hadn't accused me, you wouldn't have had the opportunity to vouch for me. And, well, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to show you my appreciation. Oh, I see. Well, the whole thing was a little silly anyway. Oh, well, not altogether. Faraday has the memory of an elephant and the persistence of a little beaver. And looks like both of them. <laughs> if anything happens, it's got to be Boston Blackie. Oh, that's a nuisance, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Faraday hounds me, but it's good to have him around at the wind-up. Blackie, I don't quite make you out, but I like you. Thanks. I, uh, I hope that's an understatement. Well, I'm surprised the police are so suspicious of you. Oh, that's the story of my life. You see, Faraday has good instincts, only he picks the wrong person. If he knew, for instance, that tonight I may have something to do with robbing a vault... He'd become suspicious right away. But of course you haven't anything to do with that. But of course I have. Only it's not as bad as it sounds. Oh, now I'm really puzzled. Well, the only puzzle is, uh, why don't I spend the rest of the evening with you? Meaning that you have to leave? Meaning that I have an important conference about something green and something Egyptian. Oh, I see. But like the Sphinx, you won't talk. Perhaps I'll have something to tell you later. <laughs> I'll get your coat. Oh, thanks. I have to phone. But don't make any dates for the next month. <laughs> I want to put in my bed first. Hello? Operator, give me Madison 72772. Hello? 
Inspector, this is Helen Carew. I just had dinner with Boston Blackie. We're leaving now. He's dropping me off at my hotel. He's going down to go days. He's after the emeralds. And, Inspector, if you should happen to catch him, please don't mention me. The flowers that bloom in the summer have nothing on your pretty cotton washable dresses, ladies. Not when it comes to eye-filling loveliness. And say, you were particular to pick out just the dresses you wanted, weren't you? Well, then you ought to be just as particular about your soap. That's when you want Rinso. Wash after wash, Rinso leaves your clothes bright and new-looking because those power-packed suds get out more dirt. Yes, you'll be proud of your Rinso wash. I bet you'll join our chorus of women who have learned to sing their way through wash day like this. Rinso white, Rinso white, happy little wash day song. Rinso white, Rinso white, bird to sing it all day long. Your fine feather friend has a message to send, so listen, you can't go wrong. Rinso white, Rinso white, Happy little wash day song. So get Rinso tomorrow. And now back to Chester Morris and the adventures of Boston Blackie. Boston Blackie, unaware that Helen Carew has tipped off Inspector Faraday as to his destination, is en route to Godet's Jewelers to try to prevent the robbery of the vault there and to discover who is back of the attempt to steal the famous Star of the Nile emerald. It is midnight at the Godet Vault. It's no use, Louis. It's one of them new style vaults. I can't make it out. Well, we got dynamite. I have to use it. I don't like a noisy job, but where is it? I left it out in the alley, boss. Now go get it. Okay, I'm going. Try again, Fingers. Stevens is paying off plenty. Well, I'm nervous. This is a big job, boss. <laughs> Too big for you, what? Fingers. Okay, stay where you are. Boston Black. That's right. What were you saying about a certain Mr. Stevens? <laughs> now, look, Blackie, let's be sensible about this. You know? We're having a little trouble cracking this crib. Yeah. I'll make a bet. Look. Yeah, I'll bet you can't open it. Are you kidding, Fingers? I'll make a good bet. All right. So it'll pay you to try. Well, I'll make a bet with you. Not the kind of a bet that'll pay you in money, but it might save a few years of your life. Yeah? Yeah. All you have to do is talk. Yeah, we'll talk, Blackie. And drop your rod first. Oh, so you got a little playmate. Okay. Take your gun away from my back. Get it, Louie. I get it. You know, Blackie, this is a happy coincidence. As I said before, we can use you. Only now the bet's off. You're just gonna do it. Come on, get those fingers working. And, uh, and suppose these fingers can't open the vault. And the next time you go to buy gloves, you better look for mittens. <laughs> Come on, take a good look at the crib. Oh, a beautiful job. <laughs> mm. You know, Faraday should see me now. <laughs> okay. Stand back and keep quiet. Yeah, we'll be quiet, all right, but it's up to you, Blackie. This gun can make a lot of noise. Shh. Wait a minute. It feels like, uh... Ah, there's one. Now, let's try this. Uh-huh, next one. Oh, now that's two. Now... Open up! Open up, Louie. Break this door down. Come on, it's too long. It's the cops. Yeah, yeah, Miller. Is the alley door open? Yeah, and Joe's coming out there. Okay, let's beat it. Now, what about Blackie? Ah, forget about Blackie. Come on. Okay, okay. Hey! Hey, now, Chief! Stop, Blackie, or we'll shoot! I warned you, Blackie. Hey, this isn't Blackie. Hey, who are these other two? Oh, Louie, huh? Yeah, Fingers and Miller. Hey, what is this, a national convention? Where's Blackie? How'd you know Blackie was going to be down there, Faraday? A little bird told me, but where is he? Well, now, I don't expect you to believe this, Inspector, but so help me. We were passing by the alley, and we heard a noise, and we come in. Naturally curious, you understand? Yeah. And who do you suppose was starting to crack that vault? Don't tell me, Boston Blackie? Yeah. Well, then, what are we doing out here in the alley? He couldn't have gotten away. Yeah, Chief, there's only two doors to that room. We came through this one. Hey, so he better be back in that vault room. That's right. Eddie, watch these mugs here. Right. Come on, Matthews, let's have a look. Ain't in here, Chief. Ain't in here. Oh, I can see for myself, Matthews. I can see for myself. Must have slipped through the door before we came in. Matthews, you're fired. Me, Chief? I ain't done nothing. That's the trouble. You never do anything. I'll see if the vault's open, Matthews. Okay, Chief. Now, lock tight in the drum. There ain't a mark on it. Looks like we saved the emerald for go days, huh, Inspector? Yeah, but I wish somebody had saved Blackie for me. Matthews, I hate to say it, but we gave Blackie a break. We came in just in time to save him from getting into trouble. I 
I just wanted to thank you, Inspector, for preventing the robbery last night and catching the thieves. Don't mention it, Mr. Stevens. Uh, tell me, did they have a chance to open the vault? Nope. We were Johnny on the spot. They never even got started. Well, Inspector, I can't thank you enough for the fine job you've done. Mm, fine job. Nothing ever happens. Nobody steals anything. Listen, Mr. Stevens, if somebody should steal that emerald and I catch him, then you can thank me. <laughs> what burns me up is that Boston Blackie was down there, too, but he got away. Boston Blackie, he got away? Are yeah. you sure the vault wasn't open? Sure, we tried it. It was locked tight. Well, that's fine, but uh, to be on the safe side, I'd better check up. I'll go right down to the vault myself. Yeah. But I tell you, Faraday, it's gone. The emerald's gone. I just searched the vault. It's gone. That's great. I've really got Boston Blackie now. Don't worry, Mr. Stevens. Calm down. You'll get your star, and I'll get Boston Blackie. So that's what happened, Helen. Faraday collected three mugs, and he didn't seem pleased about but it. Blackie, how did you get out? Well, while Faraday was rounding up the other mugs, I got the last number of the vault's combination, you see. Mm -hmm. I opened the door and stepped in and then closed it. You might have been locked in. I was locked in, fortunately, because somebody tried the handle of the vault later. You see, Helen, modern vaults have an anti-hold-up device. What's that? Oh, it's a sort of gimmick that locks the door from the inside. Mm -hmm. Well, I just pushed the lever. After they left, I slipped out through the alley door. What were you after, Blackie? I told you before. Something green and something Egyptian. The Star of the Nile Emerald, of course. Did you find it in the vault? Yes. Oh. But I didn't take it. I just wanted to make sure it was there. You didn't take it. Blackie, I don't understand you. Now, look, somebody's after the Star of the Nile, and if he gets it, somebody's going to take the rap for it. Could be me, but that's not the point. Nobody's going to take a rap for somebody else while I'm around. You're talking about somebody. Who? I'll find that out. But first, I want to have a talk with Mr. Stevens at his hotel. Perhaps he has an idea. Goodbye, Helen. Next time, I promise you, we won't have any outside interference. Operator, give me Madison 72772. Hello? Helen Carew speaking. Oh, the inspector isn't there? Well, then I want to leave a message. Tell him that Boston Blackie is on his way to the Cavanaugh Hotel to see Mr. Stevens. I can't wait for the inspector to call back, so tell him I'm going to see Stevens, too, right now. But try to get the inspector there as quickly as you can. Slow down, Blackie. Slow down there. Okay, you can march in step with me and Matthews now. Oh. You're taking your afternoon constitutional, gentlemen? What were you doing back there at the Middleton apartment, Blackie? Now, Inspector, you're privileged to know anything about my public life. Mm -hmm. But I insist that you don't interfere in my private affairs. Hmm. Well, this is a little private affair that I am interfering in. Oh. You're under arrest for stealing the Star of the Nile. What, again? And no alibi this time, either. You were down at the Good Day vault with Louie and the two other guys. I got them and searched them, but you got away. Now, somebody got that emerald out of the vault. Come on. Shake a leg, Blackie. Hey, I didn't say stop. I said go. Police! Police, I've what? been robbed. You have, who, who robbed? Oh, have you gone man. nuts, Blackie? Let me go, police! Oh, cut it out. What is it? Who what? Let me go. 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 Now, listen, you all really give it to you. Here, he's chasing me. Oh, hey, he's gone. Matthews, why don't you help me out of this mob? Hey, folks, look, I'm a police inspector. Honest, I am. Matthews, quick, shoot it, Blackie! Hey, listen, all of you, stand back. Lay off that fella. He's a police. That's Matthews. He's police, too. Thanks, Chief. Say, did Blackie get away? Yeah. Matthews, you're fired! But I was sure he was coming here, Mr. Stevens. Miss Carew, why should Mr. Blackie come to see me at my hotel? Besides, I'm confident that by this time, Inspector Faraday has made sure that the young man is no longer a free agent. Perhaps, yes. Perhaps you're right. But, well, I'm not sure the inspector is right in what he's doing. Oh, now, Miss Carew, it's quite obvious that you have an attachment for Mr. Blackie. And if the police have taken him, I won't have to worry about the Star of the Nile any longer. The police haven't taken me, Mr. Stevens. Boston Blackie. And incidentally, if I knew how much the Star of the Nile would be worth to you, I, uh... I might listen to reason. Blackie. Hello, Miss Carew. I rather expected you'd be here, too. I wouldn't try to phone Mr. Stevens. You really don't want the police to come up here. Why not? Because it would be very embarrassing for you. And besides, it would be very embarrassing if I had to use this gun. Blackie, look. Oh, Helen, don't. Helen, why did you knock the gun out of my hand? Because you had me fooled for a while, but I'm finally beginning to understand you, Black. All right, the two of you stand still and put your hands up high. Oh, so you have a gun too, Mr. Stevens. Is, uh, is that to guard the emerald you stole from your own vault? Mr. Stevens took the emerald? Yes. Usually when people want to steal something, they just steal it, but Mr. Stevens had to do it the hard way. But you made it much easier for me, Mr. Blackie. You see, you were in the vault, and now everybody will know that Boston Blackie stole the emerald. But just one thing I'd like to know, Mr. Stevens. Why does a vice president of a large firm like Godet's have to steal a piece of 
of jewelry. Well, there's an ugly word for it, embezzlement. I'm awfully oh. sorry, Miss Carew. Sorry that you came here tonight because no one else can know what you two know now. I'm going to have to kill you. Come on, Stevens, give me that gun. Stay where you are. I want that gun, Stevens. Blackie, don't. I told you to stay where you are. Look, you can't pull that trigger. Get back! Get back! Thanks, Helen, for sending the message. Yeah, Inspector, I think Mr. Stevens will go with you now. Oh, Stevens? Yes, Inspector, and thanks for putting Helen on this case. We've got your man. Come on, let's go. No, I won't go. I can't go. Huh? I've gone long enough. I can never catch up. For years now, I've been running after myself, running away from something. I couldn't stop, but I've got to stop. You'll never get me, I tell you. I've got to stop. Here, here, here. Ah! Well, we got what we were looking for, but I can't say I'm very happy about it. Well, Faraday, this time I've really got to thank you. <laughs> Don't kid me, Blackie. No, on the level. You saved my life. <laughs> you know, it's the first time in ten years that I've been scared. Really? Well, you know, Stevens might have pulled that trigger. No such luck. Oh, very funny. <laughs> yes, he'd have shot Helen and me if you hadn't knocked on the door. He had only one other way out, Faraday, and because you came in, he took that way. <laughs> Always blaming it on me, huh? <laughs> now, look, Inspector, won't you miss me a teeny little bit? Does a guy miss a headache? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Helen, you really had me fooled. Hmm? But let me give you a tip. The next time you call Madison 72772, you better be inside a telephone booth. What? Remember when we were out for dinner the first time? Yeah. Well, I went to get your coat, and as I was leaving, I heard you ask the operator for Madison 72772. My private number. Sure. Only a few people know that number, and I'm proud to be one of them. So you knew I was working for the inspector. Sure, but that didn't matter. You already had your hooks in me, and I couldn't get loose. Well, perhaps now you'd like me to unhook you? Oh, honey, with you, anything goes. By hook or by crook. I suppose it's your business if you want to make a big job out of dishwashing, but I'd like to butt in just the same because I feel you don't really like to spend a lot of time at the kitchen sink, and you don't have to if you put Rinso to work for you. Those peppy Rinso suds get your dishes sparkling bright so easily that there's not much point in scraping and scouring with the lazy suds of some soaps. And Rinso's so economical, too. Just a little Rinso goes a long, long way. So better get Rinso tomorrow for dishwashing, for all the soap and water jobs around the house, and for a wash that's <whistles> Rinso white and Rinso bright. <laughs> And now a glimpse at next week's adventure of Boston Blackie. Here it goes. What a crack up. Them plain clothes cops in that car, they never gonna interrupt another one of our hijack jobs. Plain clothes cops? <laughs> Them ain't no cops. The driver of the car that just wrapped around a telephone pole is Boston Blackie. <laughs> Friends, millions of tons of paper are needed to ship ammunition and blood plasma, so vitally necessary in the winning of this war. Do your share to see that our boys get the material they need. Save paper. The need is terribly urgent. Now, one simple way to help is to take your own shopping bag to the grocers. Be sure to listen in at this same time next week for another exciting adventure with Boston Blackie. You can see Chester Morris as Boston Blackie on the screen at your favorite movie theater. Boston Blackie's latest Columbia picture is One Mysterious Night, soon to be released. Richard Lane appears as Inspector Faraday. Music by Charles Cornell. This is Harlow Wilcox saying goodnight for Boston Blackie, brought to you by the makers of Rinso, the soap that gets clothes. <laughs> And when you get Rinso tomorrow, buy some Life Boy, too. Use Life Boy in your daily bath or shower. You love that rich, purifying lather. You know, of seven leading brands, Life Boy gives you the most soap for your money. And besides, it's the only soap especially made to stop... This is the National Broadcasting Company. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.